Okay, okay, that's enough. That was good. All right, that was good, wasn't it? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. There was about 30 something of them here Wednesday night. And uh, you need to get your kids in that Wednesday night Bible class, boy. They're, they're getting some help from on high. Amen. Okay. All right, but Dwayne, y'all come on. They got a song for us tonight. And I know it'll be a blessing to you. And uh, then we're going to have our offering tonight. Amen. Somebody want to jump up and pray on the Lord right quick. Thank the Lord for the rain. Go ahead, sis. Sure did. Praise the Lord. That's good. Can't beat that. Amen. Anybody else? Right quick. Pop up, pop off, pop back down while they're getting the song ready. Anybody? Right quick. Uh, I want to say again, thank you for going with us to uh, Friday night. Had a good crowd went down and sang and had a good service. And it really was an encouragement to Brother Jack. Um, and then Friday night, we're going to Mooresville, so I want you to go. 5.30, it's free, you know, no gas. You can hop on the bus and go. You'll enjoy it and bring $5 for CC's Pizza if you want to eat. Hey, y'all go ahead. Let's see here. Heavenly Father, it's just me again. I don't mean to be a bother, but you are my dearest friend. I just get so homesick, and I can't help but feel alone one golden daybreak. I'm coming home One golden daybreak I'm gonna leave the ground Gonna see my blessed Savior And wear my robe and crown It's been a long, hard battle Thank God I kept the faith One golden daybreak I'll see your face Heavenly Father It's just me again I just kneel to talk and forget this world of sin I know my work's not over But I can't help but feel alone One golden daybreak I'm coming home One golden daybreak I'm gonna leave the ground Gonna see my blessed Savior And wear my robe and crown It's been a long, hard battle Thank God I kept the faith One golden daybreak I'll see your face Amen, I like that Go that say amen that's good. Hallelujah. Thank y'all. Appreciate that. Amen. Uh, that's a real blessing to have all of you. If you're visiting tonight, glad you're here. And I'm just going to bring a little short message tonight. We're going to have a bus meeting. Uh, Brother uh, Clark, is that right? Uh, met him a while ago. I might have met him years ago. Who uh, found from Hollywood, Florida. That used to be at that church down there where Dr. Wally Beebe was pastor. He called Mr. Bus. Great bus worker and worked out in the mountains. Stand up and say something for the Lord, brother. Amen. I 
That's right. Amen. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you coming by. We need you to pray for our buses. We, we run five of them this morning. Had 136 on five buses. That's good on just a regular Sunday. But we're having fun, uh, mechanical trouble with them. So if you can lay hands on them and heal them, that'd be wonderful. Amen, brother. That's right. That's the best money you can put in. I believe that as far as results go. Uh, we have kids saved almost every Sunday back there in the junior church. And I'm a firm believer in it. A firm believer in it. People say, well, it don't work no more. And the reason you say that is because they don't want to work. Uh, uh, it, it's work. It's work. And it's not, it's not an asset to the church financially. It's a liability. And so, you know, people just don't want to fool with it. But thank the Lord for those bus kids. Thank the Lord for bus workers. Let's take our Bibles this evening and turn to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter number 13. Um, uh, do pray for our buses. We're still looking for a transmission for one. And uh, pray that the Lord just, there's one out there somewhere. God will put it on somebody's heart to help and it will get it done. Romans 13. Let's look at it t tonight. Just one or two verses of scripture here and everybody should know. And I'm going to give you a thought. Uh, this morning, uh, this evening, because I've done so much this morning and covered such a wide variety of, of stuff this morning. Romans chapter number 13. The book of Romans chapter 13, and we'll look at verse number 11. Look at these scriptures here. And that knowing the time, we ought to know the time that we're living in, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Now you think, what do you think he's talking about there? He ain't talking about just waking up one morning. He's talking about spiritually, people are asleep. Uh, awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night, spiritually speaking, is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. I want to preach for a few minutes tonight on the subject of Christians wake up. Christians wake up. The time that you and I are living in, in the Bible, spiritually is referred to as night time. It's a time when the sun, S-U-N, the sun, S-O-N, is gone and there's no, it's dark outside. And you get awful sleepy. You got to understand that the sun, S-U-N, in the Bible is a type of the sun, S-O-N. The sun that shines is a picture of Jesus Christ. Psalm, one, uh, Psalm 19 talks about it. Malachi chapter 4 talks about it. The moon in the Bible is a picture of the church. All through the Bible, Song of Solomon uh, chapter 6, talking about, see, when the sun comes up, the moon has no light of its own. All the light the moon has is the sun shining on it. That's the church. That's Jesus Christ. The church has no light of its own. All the light we have is reflecting from the Lord Jesus Christ. And the moon reflects light to a dark world in the nighttime because the sun's shining on it on the other side of the world. When the world comes between the sun and the church, you call that uh, an eclipse. Or the sun and the moon, you call that an eclipse. It means the world is blocking out the light of the sun shining on the moon. And sadly tonight, that's the shape many churches are in tonight. The world has got between the sun and the church and blocked out the light. Now the Bible talks about uh, nighttime. The Bible divides the night up into four parts. The Bible calls it like this, four watches. Evening, midnight, cock crowing, and morning. Those are the four divisions of a night. The Bible said, are there not 12 hours in the day? So if there's 12 hours in the day, there's 12 hours in the night. In the Bible, night time is from 6 o'clock p.m. to 6 o'clock a.m. the next morning. It's divided into four watches from 6 in the evening until 9 in the evening uh, is called evening. Uh, from Actually, 3 o'clock on is called evening. 
You ever wondered why the uh, southerners down south, we say this evening, and we're talking about two and three o'clock, it comes from Little Bird in the book of Daniel, where he talks about the evening oblation. When Yankees say evening, they're talking about late eight, nine, ten o'clock at night. When Southerners say evening, they're talking about three and four o'clock. It comes from the Bible. Back over in the book of Daniel, chapter eight, nine, long enough. Evening oblation. That's three o'clock in the evening. But anyway, that evening time comes up to six o'clock, and then nine to twelve is going to midnight, and then twelve to three o'clock in the morning, cock crowing. That's when a rooster crows. 3 o'clock in the morning, and then from 3 to 6 a.m. would be considered morning. So 3 o'clock, if you take those four watches and divide them up into the church age of 2,000, basically, years, you have four watches of 500 years each. You have evening from 9 to 12. That would be like from uh, the first coming of the Lord to 500 A.D. That would be the evening. Then from 500 A.D. to 1000 A.D., the second watch. And that would be uh, the period up to 1000 A.D. You know what you call that in history? The Dark Ages. That's when it was spiritually messed up in this world. Then you have the third watch. That would be from 1000 A.D. to 1500 A.D., the cock crowing, the rooster crow. You know what happened in 1500 A.D.? Martin Luther, the Reformation began. And began to preach and say, hey! And the church came out in the underground, the cock crowing began morning, and then six o'clock morning, those four watches. You can't nail that down exactly, but it sure is awful coincidental that it fits those periods of church history. And the Bible said when the Lord came to those disciples on the sea that night, that he came in the fourth watch of the night. That's in the early morning hours. So, to make it, make it plain what I'm talking about tonight, here's what the Lord did. He said, all right, I've died on the cross. I'm going back to heaven. Now, you guys, it's night time. The night time's divided up into four periods. Your job is to stay awake all night and preach the gospel. I'll be back at the fourth watch of the night in the morning. So the Lord's coming but at six o'clock in the morning. And you know where we are right now? We are in those last few uh, 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 minutes before uh, the morning time. The morning when the Lord shall come. No man knows the day. No man knows the hour. We don't know when he's coming. But I know one thing. He's coming. Now, and what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to compare that to a trip. Let's just say tonight that you're going on a trip. How many of you have ever stayed up all night long? You were driving or you were working or you were sitting up with a loved one in the hospital, but you have stayed up all night. Would you raise your hand, please? All right, that's about everybody in here. I believe that's about everybody in here. Uh, some of you teenagers, you ain't never stayed up uh, uh, three hours. Uh, I don't think, uh, straight in the road. Uh, but anyway, uh, I have, I have, and I've drove. I've left Florida before and went, drove with a bunch of boys and got home at 8.30 in the morning on Sunday morning, took a shower and come to church. Just went straight to the shower. Went no use laying down. That's an awful feeling. But your job is to stay awake all night. That's not easy. That's not easy. The average church tonight, you'd look at it like that. You'd have this church there, spiritually speaking. You'd see a bunch of little Z's going out of it. Sound asleep. You know as well as I know. Somebody told me the other day, they said, Brother Danny, we was visiting somewhere. We was down, out somewhere, off down the coast of North Carolina somewhere. They said, man, we went to this church. They said, oh my goodness. They said, we about died. They said, it was so quiet and so dead. I'm telling and, 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 and we ain't setting woods on fire. But I'll tell you one thing, uh, hey, you don't know how dead it is till you get out here and start visiting around uh, uh, some of these churches tonight. It's pitiful. I'm telling you tonight, you know why? Because it's hard. Hard to stay up all night long. I mean, everybody's all gung ho about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. Woo! Man, we're going to have fun all night. We're going to stay up. Boy, well, I've heard that before. They start dropping off about 1 o'clock, about 2 o'clock, about 3 o'clock, about 4 o'clock, and 5 o'clock in the morning. They ain't quite as excited as they was, you know. I said, oh, boys, come on. Every once in a while I have one of them go with me on a trip. And you've heard me tell these stories about how that, and I tell you, the only way you can do it is grit your teeth and just say, by the grace of God, I'm going to make it and I ain't going to sleep. Man, I've tried everything in the world. You know what I've tried? Staying awake all night. I mean, I've been awake a long time. I've been awake through the midnight. I've been awake since I was 19, and I'm trying to help other people stay awake. That's my job. I'm an alarm clock. Uh, the world calls you an alarmist if you preach and get up people, wake people up. 
But you know why people don't like a preacher? Because we stand up here every, su every Sunday morning and go, <laughs> Get up! Get up! Wake up! Jesus is coming! And people say, no, leave me alone. Man. Let me sleep a little bit. No, Nobody likes alarm clock. I'm, I, do you like an alarm clock? I hate them. I don't care what kind of sound they make. They try to make pleasant little sound. I'll throw it through out the window, man. I, I, I mean, I hate them things. Nobody likes an alarm clock. I know people that have to set, here's the bed right here, and they have to set their alarm clock over on the other side of the room. And they have to do that. I see some people nodding your head. And you know why you do that? Because you're so, you so sorry you won't get up when it goes off. So you make yourself get up and walk across the room and turn the stupid thing off. All right, I'm up. Then you know what you do? Go back and lay down and put the snooze button on. I never have understood why people hit that snooze button. That's, that's just putting yourself through torture again. Because right about the time you get back to sleep, ten, trrr, you got to go through all that waking up process and getting up again. I mean, I wake up in the morning sometime and, and my mind is saying, get up, Danny. Get up, Danny. And my body's saying, oh, I just got to sleep. This feels so good. Give me just a minute. And then my mind saying, if you don't get up, you're going to go back to sleep. And, and, you, and you know, you got to go somewhere. You got to do something. And then my mind saying, I got to get up. I got to get up. My body's saying no. My mind's saying yes. My body's saying no. And you know, it's the same way in living for God, folks. Same way in living for God. Buddy, we're dark into the night. It's very, very late. I mean, we've been doing this for a long time. The gospel's been preached. We're in the night time, brother. Listen, if they was the beginning of the night in, in, in Jesus' day, if them disciples started it out right then, we're 2,000 years later. We've been driving all night long. I'm telling you, there's never been a time when it's harder to stay awake and on fire for God than it is now. You know what I found out? I found out this. I found out I drove a lot at night. I can tell you about driving at night because I do it. I've done it and I do it a lot and I hate it. And the worst thing you can do when you're driving at night is get real still. That'll preach, won't it? The worst, I said, heard me, didn't you? You that used to be in the bus ministry. You heard me, didn't you? You that used to sing in the choir, you that used to witness, the worst thing you can do when you drive a long way is get still. You get settled down like this. You know, on the interstate, and this is what I do. And I put this one up so I can hit the brakes with that one. And I feel it. I can feel it coming on. You know that, mm, it, it gets quiet for a second. I thought, man, I went to sleep. Mm. Listen, when you don't hear nothing for a second, you better do something fast. You're asleep, brother. <laughs> old Bo, Bo, he didn't get to come now. I took him with me to Maryland another night. And you know, old Bo, I don't know if he's his medicine or what, but that boy can talk the ears off a jackrabbit. I mean, he, he's, he's a, and, and, and I hope he's watching me tonight because I'm bragging on him. Uh, but anyway, I mean, he's a talker, brother. And I thought, man, old Bo's going to talk. And, and it's about two or, two or three o'clock in the morning. He's just talking. Talk, 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 talk. And I was over here driving like this. And finally, I couldn't even hear him. <laughs> I, I look over about every 10 minutes and say, that's right. And, and he's kept on and on. I don't know what he's talking about. When he was little, growing up, you know, everything. And I'm going to tell you, that's where a lot of y'all are at church. That's where a lot of churches are. Preachers, you know, they say preachers don't talk in their sleep. They talk in other people's sleep. That's right, brother. I mean, you think it's hard to sit there. How would you like to stand up here and scream and holler and people sitting out there like, yeah. Their eyes look like a demon possessed. I mean, uh, old, old Bo, he kept on and on and on and on and on. And, and you, somebody said, well, why didn't you let him drive? Because we that great motel I was telling you about, on his bed, there was a medicine bottle. And I looked, I thought, son, that, that woman cleaned this place and get them and sell them. So I picked it up and looked at it and said, do not operate machinery. I said, he ain't driving. I trust myself asleep more than I trust him uh, taking them pills. I said, man, I ain't, you ain't driving, dude. I, I said, I'll be all right. I, I ain't gonna let somebody drive me at three o'clock in the morning taking medicine that says may cause drowsiness and do not operate machinery while taking this medicine. Uh-uh. 
I'll tough it out myself. Amen. That's exactly what I did. Worst thing you can do is be still. Now, y'all may think, I don't know. I go down the road. I start getting real, real sleepy. You say, well, why don't you stop and sleep? Because I had to be at church the next morning. Go ahead and get on it. I, I, I do like this. I, and then I finally start doing like this. I went like this. And finally, he went to sleep and laid back like that. And he was out cold. And I was doing like this. Uh, listen, you ain't never drove all night. You know what I'm talking about. How many's ever done that right there? Raise your hand. Oh, Lord. I mean, I opened the sunroof. I stick my hands up the sunroof. I close, I put my foot up. And I tell you, the worst thing you can do is get still. And I'm going to tell you tonight. Hey, everybody listening to me? Is everybody listening to me? The worst thing you can do in 2012 is quit living, doing anything for God. The worst thing you can do is just say, I'm just going to sit back and I'll come on Sunday morning and I'm not going to get involved. You're going to sleep. What's going to happen to you? Brother, we're supposed to stay awake. We're supposed to stay awake. We're supposed to hold the banner up. And be waving the flag. Get the job done when Jesus comes. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that excites me. Listen, I'm planning some big days for the October. We're going to have a big day on October the 13th or 12th or something like that. I want to set a goal, get our bus workers together, all of the rest of y'all together, knock on a thousand doors that day for Jesus Christ. Tell somebody the old, old story. You ain't going to go sleep if you'll stay moving. You say, well, Brother Danny, we're having a lot of trouble. I tell you what to do about your trouble. Go knock on some doors. Am I right, brother? Yes, sir. And you say, well, Brother Danny, I'm having financial trouble. What should I do? Take Saturday morning, just go knock on somebody's door. You say, well, Brother Danny, me and my wife fussing. What should I do? Go knock on somebody's door. Knock on somebody's door. Knock on somebody's door. Keep moving or you'll go to sleep. Did I feel like driving? No. But my philosophy is, somebody got to stay awake. And since you ain't, I reckon I'll have to. We come back from Missouri one time. Me and some boys went out there and got a bunch of pews from a church a long time ago. And I let this nut drive from about halfway to Knoxville back through Asheville. Hey, we stopped in Asheville and ate breakfast. We'd been up all day, all night, and then all day the next day. And, and, and every, every bump, every time he hit a bump, I'd, you all right? You all right? That's torture. That's worse. I might as well be driving. I'd almost get to sleep. He just barely, are you all right? You say, don't you trust nobody? No, I don't trust nobody because I know how hard it is to stay awake. And I tell you what, I've seen, I've been behind them, them doing like this, going down the road. And they ain't drunk. I mean, they're asleep. And you know what? We sat down there and eat breakfast that morning. And I said, man, I thought you was out there a time or two. He started confessing. He said one time he thought he was in the back of the van hanging up his clothes. <laughs> Coming through the gorge over there, brother, from Gatlinburg. <laughs> I said, what? You idiot, you could have killed us. And I'm going to tell you something, brother. We've got people in our churches tonight. Sound to sleep on God. Worst thing you can do is get still. Quiet. Worst thing you can do is get quiet. You got that, didn't you? Worst thing you can do is get quiet. Don't get quiet. I ain't going to get quiet. I'm going to sing. I'm going to preach. I'm going to witness. I don't, you know what I did? I was telling you about witnesses of the hitchhiker this, this morning and the guy at the, at the convenience store and everything. I'm not going to get quiet. If you won't keep quiet, you ain't going to go to sleep if you, if you keep running that mouth for the Lord. You know why some people sleep? They quit witnessing. How many of you ever been going down the road? I'll be going down the road and I'll say, and to get to me, he'd have to go through the blood. For I'm under protection. And, and then you start getting, you start feeling numb. And you forget the words. And, 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 and you, start, you, ever done, you know what you're trying to do? You just keep singing because you know you're fighting that flesh. Let me tell you something, folks. Y'all, listen to me tonight. You get in that choir. I don't care if you feel like it or you don't feel like it. You get in here for Sunday school. I don't care if it is. It ain't going to kill you to get up 45 minutes earlier and get in Sunday school. I mean, get in your Bible. Read your Bible. Sing. Keep yourself awake. Get out tracks. Tell somebody about the Lord. You'll go to sleep. If you don't, the worst thing you can do is get comfortable. Get comfortable. 
My car is comfortable, let me tell you. That thing will get you killed because it goes real smooth. And I thought, man, maybe I need to put a stick right here in my side or something. <laughs> you know, or, 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 or get an old truck. I can't keep you awake. You know what's happening in a lot of churches tonight? Smoothed out. Bills are paid. Money in the bank. Everything running smooth. And just... That's it. I don't think I've ever snored in front of nobody before. <laughs> Stay awake. I'm going to quit tonight. I just want to give you a little thought. But I want to tell you this tonight. At night time... I'm going to tell you four things about the night time. I'm not going to preach on them, just say them. At night time, nobody can see very far. You can't see far at night time. It's dark. There's not a lot of prophetic seers in our day. It's what's called in the Old Testament, seers. Man, there ain't a lot of vision now. I taught the other Sunday night, Wednesday night, about the rapture and and the millennium, and the, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, they ain't hardly nobody, the whole Christian community is shifting away from that now because they're using different versions of the Bible and they can't get it, they can't get it figured out. Not very people, many people can see very far. Oh, Clarence Larkin and them guys back in the late 1800s, and even Schofield and a bunch of them guys, they could see. They could see prophetically. But we can't see nowadays. It's dark. Number two, at night time, all light on this earth is artificial. All light to, on this earth is artificial. This in here, that ain't, that ain't the sun. That's artificial light. And that's why, that's why most of the time you'll find God out in the country and the big cities, it's more wicked. You ever seen, go into big cities, go to New York City and, and you see how many people you see looking at the moon. Nobody. All you can see in New York City is lights and buildings. I don't know if I can ever even see the moon. Maybe once in a while. There it is, straight up. But the rest of the time, it's just artificial light. You go out in the country, and everything's real dark. Wow, that moon's out there. Man, that thing's brilliant. That's the way you need to live your life. See, the more junk, big city life, partying, wickedness and everything, crowds in, the light you can't see. All you see is that artificial light. All the light you see nowadays is artificial. Even churches... Scary, man. It's scary. I, I, you can call me old-fashioned, crazy, whatever you want to, but there's, it's a, there's a different spirit coming in churches nowadays. Right. Manufactured, calling it the Spirit of God. Something ain't right. right. When it's all just jump around and have life and nobody cries, yep. and, and you can and be living any old way and not even feel guilty, that ain't the Spirit of God, people. Right. Spirit of God makes you feel guilty if you're not right. Yep. right. Amen? Scare you to death. It gets in there just right. All light on this earth is artificial. The third thing is at night, adulterers and thieves are busy. Amen? That's when all the wickedness goes on. And finally, at night, you get sleepier and sleepier because the sun is getting ready to come up. I've drove to Florida before. A man... It starts getting almost 6 o'clock in the morning and you see the sky start getting light. And then you can see over there on the east side, the sun comes up over the Atlantic Ocean and it goes down in the Pacific Ocean over in California. But over on the Atlantic Ocean, over yonder, you can see it coming up in the sky getting lighter and lighter and lighter. That's where we are now, buddy. It's getting light. The Lord's coming back. Can I just sort of gouge you a little bit tonight and say, let's stay awake. Stay awake. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed and every eye closed. They're coming to get us a song tonight. You say, preacher, I'm having a hard time staying awake. But Danny, I'm just about to fall out. I need to get to work. I need to wake myself up. I need to shake myself. And wake up. 